Joining me now to weigh in from New York City is America's accountant, Dan Geltrude. Dan, uh, Mayor Pete said something there, is if it's affordable for lower income families, but uh, he seems to be putting the cart before the horse because he wants to transition as quickly as possible, but it's extremely unaffordable for most of the country. We have to be practical here, Addison, and as we're looking at this, let's make an assumption, and it's a big assumption, that if we go to electric vehicles, we could stop climate change. By the way, I don't think that's going to happen, but let's assume that it can. But practically speaking, how do we get there? We already know, for example, in California, that their electric grid cannot handle the amount of electric they're using now. The infrastructure is simply not there. So 12 or 13 years from now, we're gonna have no gas vehicles and everything's gonna be electric and everybody's gonna be charging at the same time, presumably at night, right? Everybody's gonna plug in their car. Well, you could be as wishful as you want about wanting to change climate change. However, if it can happen, because we don't have the infrastructure to do it, then it's not gonna happen. So if we're gonna go in that direction on a long-term basis, fine, make it something that could actually work. And by the way, if we're not gonna get cooperation from other nations around the globe, particularly China and India, as far as how many pollutants they're putting out in the atmosphere, many times the amount that we are, right. we're going nowhere. Everybody's got to get on board or it doesn't work. Right. Well, but, but as we've seen, these government officials want to act hastily to transition to this. And so do airline companies, if you can believe it, Dan. We're starting to see uh, electric airplanes become a possibility in the near future. Now, California can't even, like I said in my intro, can't even leave a ceiling fan unattended without having a statewide blackout. But they want to go ahead and say, hey, let's do electric planes while we're at it. I have this from the Daily Wire. United Airlines announced a deal to buy up, up to 400 electric aircrafts from EVE Air Mobility, coupled with a $15 million investment in the startup. Now, the catch is uh, these planes only seat for people. So it doesn't seem to be the most uh, efficient option here if we're talking about getting uh, getting large groups of people from point A to point B. Your thoughts on this? I, I think we're even further away than we are with cars related to having electric airplanes, although they'll probably be a lot quieter, which I guess is, is a plus overall. But look, uh, we're a long way off from being able to do that. But look, if if Airlines want to start to look at how could they advance technology. Of course, I'm all for that. But look at it this way. We've been talking about what the price is going to be uh, related to these electric vehicles and how people simply can't afford it. What What's the cost going to be for an airline ticket on an electric plane if we right. can get to the point where we could have a, a plane that large? I, I don't know if anybody would be able to afford to travel by air at that point. So again, I go back to, can we please be practical? Right. Great to have goals, let's make it realistic. Right, and it seems, if anything, I understand what you're saying, you know, if, if, if this is a possibility, if we can transition to that and make it more affordable and have more electric vehicles uh, that, that lower income and everyday Joes can, can actually buy, uh, you know, fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with electric vehicles. I think Teslas are super cool, uh, but, but this push at a time where we have such financial instability is is absurd. And on top of it, you have this data from the Federal Reserve that household wealth, uh, total household wealth in the U.S. fell $6.1 trillion during the second quarter of 2022. So households are $6.1 trillion less wealthy as we're looking for uh, insustainable, more expensive solutions to, to fight the, the so-called sun monster. Dan, $6.1 trillion is a lot of money. Uh, yes, it is. So let, let's just dissect that a little bit and see what's going on. So that wealth is disappearing related to what's going on with the stock market. So uh, just to let people know out there, right, we're, we're seeing rising interest rates from the Fed. 
as interest rates rise, generally speaking, what happens? You have a decrease in the value of equities, meaning the stock market, plus you generally have a decrease in the value of your home, right? Because the more people have to pay related to mortgage interest, the less they can afford related to price. So that forces the market value of homes to come down. So what are we looking at here? Perhaps just the beginning of disappearing wealth in the United States for the middle class. So we go to look at your 401ks. Well, not doing so great. We potentially have the value of, of homes dropping as well. And, the, and then we look at the big picture of inflation and debt is rising across the board because people simply can't afford to buy necessities. So all of this is going in the wrong direction right now. Well, and, and of course, I'm not sure if you saw this, Dan, but over the weekend, the Biden administration released a 58-page pat on the back, essentially, talking about how great the economy has been since they took office. It was 58 pages of saying, you know, here's what we've done, here's what we've done. I'm looking around, Dan, I know you're looking around, and we're wondering, uh, what have you done, at least what good have you done? Do you think that there is 58 pages worth of, of cheering and accomplishments of, of the state of the economy right now since January of 2021? Uh, no, I don't. Not unless you're putting maybe one letter on each page. But, uh, <laughs> certainly, I, I don't. I don't think you could collect that many accolades. I think what what they're trying to emphasize is what's going on related to jobs, which they say as new jobs created or jobs growth, job growth. But really, what you have to say is these are are jobs recovered, and right. of course, that was going to happen automatically. Once the pandemic started to, to fade away and hopefully we continue in that direction, people were going to go back to work. Yeah. So uh, just by being there, that was going to happen. So I, I don't really know how much credit you can take for that. I guess if you're there, you could say, well, we did have these jobs come back, but it's a little bit of a play on, on words. It's not job growth. It's not job creation. It's job recovery. Yeah, and the jobs would have been recovered even if a, a dead guy was running the country, which is essentially what we have today. Dan Geltrude, America's accountant. Always great to have you on the show. Thank you, my friend. Thanks, Addison.